And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa Public Affairs Analyst Sopuna Bon Kotare joins us uh, live uh, via Zoom to uh, give us his expert analysis as we go through the pages, uh, the front pages of today's National Dailies. Uh, Opuna Bon Kotare, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time and Happy New Week. Good morning. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Nigerians, and uh, Happy New Year. All right. It's an it's a, a independence holiday. I can see you in your green and uh, wearing what I call the autumn cup. Um, I think uh, that's a good way to celebrate uh, Nigeria. Kofi, I, I, well, I must tell you the truth. Uh, it's just a coincidence. It wasn't a deliberate thing. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, really nothing, maybe it's... Really nothing to celebrate about Nigeria. <laughs> Maybe it's, maybe it's written in the stars. All right, let, let's start uh, with a look at the punch <laughs> this morning. And so very interesting uh, stories on the front pages today, uh, being the first working day in the week. Uh, the punch leads with um, this headline, the PDP crisis, what they're looking at. Um, I almost saw that was a nation newspaper for a second. PDP crisis, it says, aggrieved governors meet in Enugu plot IU's removal. Uh, they have details on page two of the paper. The writers to that, uh, Wike, Makinde, Otom, others review uh, review Atiku's uh, conditions. Wike, Makinde, Otom, others review Atiku's conditions. Ayu cannot resign until next year, Senator insists. Uh, PDP, not Ayu. Uh, Ayu paid NWC members housing allowance, according to an aide. All right. Uh, very sad scenes. Uh, front page pictures there, you can see. From Indonesia, a stadium tragedy is a riot after a game, and uh, of course, uh, it was it was a very bizarre, very sad one. Anger as over 120 fans die in Indonesian stadium tragedy. Really sad, really sad. I wonder, um, you know, whether it's worth it to get into a riot uh, because of football. Uh, Anyway, more from the paper. 3.92 trillion Naira fuel subsidy topples defense, health, education budgets. Uh, 3.92 trillion Naira fuel subsidy topples defense, health, education budgets. 25 million Naira fine. Pay punch 28-year debt. Caught tells AGF. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, strike. Reps meet Buhari Tuesday. FG warns ASU. Reps meet Buhari Tuesday. FG warns ASU. What an irony of a headline. Uh, Deboe plans national prayer fasting, says nation troubled. Right, reminds me of uh, one church that had its uh, yearly theme for some years ago. It says, it said, uh, the church in a troubled world. Um, or the world, yeah, the church in a troubled world. You know, interesting. Uh, fans jubilate as Fina wins BB Niger 100 million naira. Some people are not ha are not happy about the money being put into entertainment. Some of them <laughs> describing it as meaningless when there are other things to sponsor. Uh, that's a debate that won't end today. Pay our salaries. Doctors tackle Imo Ondo uh, Ekiti. Pay our salaries. Doctors tackle Imo Ondo Ekiti. Quara doctor kills girlfriend, housewife. Uh, buries corpses in office. A really, really sad one. You don't want to hear something like this on a Monday. Uh, FG finds oil firms 127 billion now for gas flaring. Right, that's some free money for them to make. Um, over to the nation with these uh, headlines. Um, it's a nice picture of uh, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Shiwaji Bola Ametin. He put out the video and a tweet. In a tweet yesterday, he was cycling. Uh, uh, his um, uh, he was was cycling the exercise bicycle like you're seeing there, um, and he says, "I'm hale and hearty," says Timbu APC candidate, ready to serve. Um, but you just need to go to the uh, comment section of that tweet to really see what people are saying uh, down there. But a big one from the nation: PDP Board of Trustees may ask IU to resign. Over crisis. I mean, the nation has really given a lot of attention to this. The writers to that story, party leaders to meet Wike in Port Harcourt tomorrow, or Tom Ikpazu, Uguayi, Makinde, brainstorm in Enugu 
uh, emergency neck meeting underway in Abuja. Wonder why they all have to be traveling from from wherever they are to Enugu or to Hakon when you have Zoom. <laughs> Can they bring the storm on Zoom? All right. Um, anyway, more from the nation, Ohanese to Southeast. Don't take Atiku seriously. Uh, I'll be waiting for denial from the from the group. I'm sure that will follow in the coming hours. FG to federal government rather to develop 66,761 water schemes. Minister Bill, not political. Let's see how that goes. Gunman abduct Kwara Monarch, wife, drive, or driver, I think that's meant to be. And uh, we have Fina wins BB Niger's 100 million naira prize. Congratulations to her. Interest hike, firms face risks. 125 die in Indonesia's stadium stampede. Obey court order, government tells ASU. Obey court order. This one uh, is quite interesting with a picture of, of Chris Ngege, Minister of Labor and Employment. Uh, Ukraine celebrates recapturing towns. Uh, some stories on the front page of um, the nation. PFN to Nigerians. Vote competence, not religion. Vote competence, not religion. All right. Over to the next paper, Leadership. Uh, on Monday, it leads with a story after Abuja parley with Atiku, Makinde, Wike, or Tom Ikpazu, Uguayi meet way options. All right, that's in Enugu. The writers to that failed to reach agreement to hold more consultations after Enugu closed door meeting. Uh, uh, right, at leadership Twitter spaces, Wike's camp said it's been vindicated by 151 million now returned. PDP National Working Committee um, members. Okay, more from leadership. Machina, APC's planned appeal, waste of time, lawyers. Arufai condemns lynching of two herders in Birnin Gwari. Arufai condemns lynching of two herders in Birnin Gwari. I'm sure Punaboyokotar will be interested in commenting on that as well. Um, 32.5% CRR, uh, CBN takes out 7 trillion now from banks' vaults. Uh, I mean, there's been some debate on this. I saw some interesting debates on social media as to whether this will be healthy for the, the economy or not, especially for the banking system. Uh, crisis in CCB as commissioners accuse chairman of blocking investigations. Uh, four journalists make national honors awards lists, and check if I'm there. <laughs> And uh, Fina wins BB Nigeria reality show. Congratulations to her. Let's move over to the final paper this morning. This day, with the lead headline, Tinubu Ross Back says he's fit and ready to serve. Tinubu Ross Back says he's fit and ready to serve. APC, PCC holds inaugural meeting this week. For first time, Buhari excludes ex-Senate President Saraki from national honors that's a, a quite a noticeable one by the by the paper this day uh, the writer to that nominates late abakari in nahoro for posthumous awards lawan bajabiamila cjn uh, service chief sokonje weala amina mohammed uh, this day staff music stars among 435 others congratulations uh, to them Presidential Council to facilitate states' access to $750 million World Bank facility. Hope that doesn't end up in, in private pockets. Uh, final one from this day. Uh, strike. FG warns ASU against disobeying court order. Uh, details on page 11. Uh, Oponabo and Kutara, which, which of the headlines uh, would you like to start things off with? anyone just, just choose for me all right all right anyway uh, we'll stick with it with this day um Tidibu is fit says he's fit to serve you know put out a picture a video on twitter i think the nation captured that on his front page as well if you can flip to that um what are your thoughts the man says that you know he's heard people are already you know saying he's dead or people are wishing him dead you know and uh, he's ill and all that but um well <laughs> he's he's sorry to disappoint them He's hill and hurting, and he was cycling on that bike, bicycle. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, Kofi thinks I just Twitter uh, like times to debunk his health status, negative health, the stories concerning his negative health status. That Tinibu is medically unfit. 
or have serious medical challenges. Let me put it that way. Because when they say medically unfit, a lot of people might misinterpret it to me um, legally or constitutionally is not fit to contest. So that's not what I mean. What well, the point I'm making is we have serious medical challenges. And I believe that these are not these are challenges that are threats to his life. I strongly believe. And honestly, I'm beginning to think that probably his desperation for power is as a result of maybe I said probably as a result of what the doctor would have told him concerning his health. And so uh, he, he, he has resolved to ensure that whether the APC likes it or not, and that was how he took that threat in one of those uh, uh, Western states when he talked about Buhari, that Buhari feels and it's time back for him, but to become the president. So I have this, this belief, I have this conviction that probably the doctor must have said something to him, you know, uh, concerning uh, his lifestyle. And that was have informed his desperation. Because the man is sick. When they say sick, we are not saying malaria. Because people come up to say everybody falls sick. Of course, everybody falls sick. But you, the man who has malaria cannot be compared to the man who has cancer. I'm using this hypothetically. The man who has malaria, I'm not saying he has cancer, cannot be compared to a man who has cancer. The man who has malaria is sick. But definitely not, not as serious as the man who has cancer. Unless you have this uh, 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 malaria that gets into the brain. But you understand what I'm trying to say. So, Tinibu is really, really sick. What they are doing is just to give Nigeria the impression. And it awakens reminiscence of what happened with Yeradua. When they said Yeradua was sick. And what did the passenger do? He now, they now brought up a video of Yeradua playing squat. Eventually, what happened? Buhari's own case, even the issue of Buhari's illness, was not even contemporized as much as that of uh, Tinubu right now. But we can see what we are certain. Buhari is constantly on a long sojourn. Constantly. He's either, well, he's either on one medical trip or he's outside the country for one reason or the other. Now, again, even when he's going on a medical trip, they use uh, foreign uh, uh, visits, uh, international visits and so on. As an excuse to cover up for his trip to London. It happened recently, just this year. So, the fact that Tinibu is sick is irrefragable, my dear brother. If they like, they can come up with all kinds of pictures, they can come up with all kinds of videos. Hang on. If he said his feet, let him cycle on the video for at least one hour. <laughs> oh, but I want to tell you, is, 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 that, is, is that not too too? Is, is that not too harsh? <laughs> you want him to cycle for one hour? I mean, he's you know his age, but, 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 you know, seventy years. Uh, oh, 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 okay, is he up to seventy? Uh, oh, uh, it, it's, it gets. I have a number of number, numbers in my head. Sorry, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay, seventy. Okay, I thought it's about fifty. Let's leave that, my dear. I, I need to check. I need to check again. It's, it's, it's getting it's okay, a bit confusing. It's, it's but I mean... It's it, actually 50. Yes. Not 70, 50. It could be 50. But, but at, at his age, I mean, he looked... Did you see the video? He looks okay. He was cycling normally. If you're not well, you might not be able to cycle like that. Kobe, if you keep... If you remove... Kobe, if you remove a triple and keep him in a chair, from the wheelchair and keep him in a chair, with, with a triple in that, how will you know if he's a triple or not? But 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 open up until you 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 let him cycle let him cycle for for thirty forty minutes let him cycle how can you if you want to ride a bicycle are you going to ride a bicycle for ten minutes no Kobe let's just sit now are you going to ride a bike for ten minutes if you have to ride a bike Kobe the minimum is one hour because you have to be go around you have to go around a circle or something that is if you have to bike exercise Kobe you can't go bike for ten minutes you can't bike for fifteen let's just try. But but so I mean you, you, were, you, were, you were you were you were you were and it not, yeah. yeah yeah I mean this is a man who was at the APC presidential rally even when the president left the venue to go home to refresh and rest he was there from you the mean night the, you mean the rally are you talking about the, the, the sorry the convention the president the primary the primary um, yes, Tilbo was there from night the night if I from the day into the night into the morning to the next day where he gave his acceptance speech 
he was said, didn't go home. And we all saw, we all saw when he mounted the left hand to make a speech. We saw how he moved from the VIP stand to the left hand. You saw it. We all saw how he was fought by persons over there, including Abigail Dabiri and Co. We all saw it. So, what are we saying? To sit down there, it doesn't take anything. And don't forget, it is very possible for a man that is very sick, doesn't worry to sit down. At this worry zone now is known. Doesn't worry to sit for meetings for hours. At this worry zone is a day here, I do sit. You see, if you are sick, you are sick. If you are not sick, you are not sick. No matter how you deny it, if there are things you cannot hide. Like my late dad will always say, you are trying to hide sickness, very sickness will eventually expose you. Because you see, actually, it's like pregnancy. I'm not pregnant, I'm not pregnant. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Then they didn't even have the money that will get, uh, purchase the drugs that will make him look sick. But you see, nature is nature. And that's why once in the while these things are exposed. Nature is nature. He has the money. Okay, what has happened to the inauguration of the PCC? Such an important occasion, function. What has happened to it? It's out of the country, on medical ground. Oh, is that what we are going to face? It's okay to live in the worse than Buhari's case. That's the truth. From what we see now, Shashima will be the de facto president of the country. This is going to be the de jure, but Shashima I mean, will be I mean, will it, yeah, so president. are you not okay with that fact? I mean, if, if Shatima will be the de facto president of the country, uh, at least he, he looks if we can, if he we looks can, sweet. If we can stave off that, if we can, no, because the point I'm making is, there's no problem if, for example, now he gets into office, and something happens because I, I mean you cannot control your tomorrow. You can only pray for or against your tomorrow. You can't control it. So if you get into office and something happens and Shetima, by virtue of constitutional provision, takes over, steps it. That's a difference in altogether. You see? But then you cannot say you want to because you have a Shetima that can fill in the gap. Therefore, you can elect somebody that is medically unfit. Why do you think the Constitution is also concerned about your medical fitness? You see, the ball stops at the table. Even in Shatima, because the de facto president, his powers are limited. They are circumscribed. Let us realize that. And you are going to have a team that will now be controlled by cronies again, just like what you have under the Buaris administration. All right. Where even appointments are made into NNPC. Without Mr. President in premature, I'm not even talking about the premature, knowledge. You can imagine what the late, uh, <coughs> the chief of uh, uh, staff did because of uh, his closeness to Buhar. And today, he's being honored posthumously. For what? And even that issue of posthumous uh, honor is even contra uh, goes contrary to the provisions of the act. You are not honored, you can't honor people posthumously. I mean, this national honor. And now I go to a refused to honor this lady who died, this medical doctor, this Ebola medical doctor who died. Uh, uh, Devo, uh, uh, Devo. Ebola patient. Uh, yeah. That's why I refused to honor. Despite the pressure. Despite the pressure. But look at what he says. So nepotistic, and now he has refused to honor. Is it uh, the former chief of the former senior president? Yes, yes. So on one ground. But uh, you are honoring Tunde, who is your nephew. What has Tunde done for Nigeria that you've got to honor him? What has he done? This is the most corrupt government. Corruption is not all about finance. Nepotism is corrupt. And no centricity is corrupt. So what has he done? What has Tunde done that you have to honor Tunde? What has he done? And you don't want to honor Saraki, a former commissioner, a former governor, a former senior president. You don't want to honor him. What kind of a country is that? You are honoring the Abayar. Oh my God. What kind of a country All right. is this? All right. The uh, most uh, uh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. listening to you, my yeah. <laughs> That's uh, interesting, Punabo. Um, but but let, let's move on to the next one. Now, the, the People's Democratic Party uh, seems to to still not know where it's headed. Uh, we hear that uh, Wiki and Atiku met in Abuja. Some sort of offer was made to Wiki 
uh, the word on the street is that um, the offer is to support yeah, going, the next. It's going to yeah. in 2027. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> now the, 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 the governors who are on the wiki side of the party met in, uh, of course, Weber said, uh, this is the leadership met in Enugu to weigh out the options. They've not reached uh, an agreement. What are your thoughts on the current state of affairs in the PDNP? My brother and I just say these five governors slandering the morass of issues. You know, thinking that they can influence the exit of IU is akin to batting on the sticky wicket. It's a fallen hope. There is nothing. You know, when they said these people returned money, they funded their money. Well, in as much as it's a Nobel thing, the PDP, it has never happened. But it can be an innovation. It can be. And secondly, if it is approved, although that is still contentious, but if it is approved by, is it the neck of the party? I'm talking about the uh, uh, controversial housing allowance. If it is approved, then the truth about it is that IU can be absorbed unless it is done directly on its own without the approval of the uh, uh, approving authority or body or whatever. I don't know if it's the neck or the WC or whatever. Now, the point I'm trying to make, my dear. You are refunding this money weeks after, about a week or two weeks after it was paid into your account. Once a, a monies are paid into your account or withdrawn, you get an alert. Why didn't you raise this issue until one or two weeks after? What does that tell you? It was well orchestrated by a microscopic few. These characters are acting on the orders of these governors. Let us call the state the state. The life of Dan Obi and Co, you all know their inclination. Yeah, they are. We all know that they are from Wicked, Matinde, Autumn, and so on. And they will stop at nothing to rubbish, to cast a slur on the passion of Ayu. And that is what they are doing. I am not trying to justify. Like I said, I said, uh, if it's approved by the uh, authority that ought to approve, the body that ought to approve, if it is not, and are you on his own did it? Well, there are disciplinary measures. That does not in any way justify if it was done illegally. But even if it was done illegally, there are other disciplinary measures and not to remove IU at this point in time. It's going to cause more crisis in the past. The presidential campaigns have started. How can you now change your national chairman? And even if you change your national chairman, you see, who comes to equity must come with clean hands. You don't approbate and reprobate. Now, if you remove the national chairman and your argument is ostensibly planned on the issue of equity, fairness, and justice. In other words, where the national chairman must come from. If that is your argument, and you remove the national chairman, the man that will take his place, that will step in, is definitely somebody still from that zone. Now you're saying, for expediency, you have to treat your constitution. So that it goes to the south. Who the hell are you to dictate to the party? So are you saying the constitution should be reviewed because of just four or five persons? When even the founding fathers did not influence such a review? I mean, it is rationally inexplicable for you to come and tell me that they have to review the constitution in the interest of inclusiveness. And he was elected, elected, not appointed. 
uh, uh, I think it was the left said not appointed. When you knew that Ayu was the national chairman from the north, why did you elect Atiku? This means it, the presumption there is that the issue of where somebody comes from is immaterial. What is paramount, what is preeminent, is bigger than the post. That is the presumption. And so we don't care whether Ayu is from the north and the presidential candidate is from the north. Otherwise, you would have said Ayu is from the north. Therefore, we are not going to uh, elect somebody from the, from, the, from the north as well. Whatever this man should that went on that day is politics. Whatever this man uh, can do, it cannot even be criticized for any reason. It's politics. Because politics is all about interest. It's all about interest. Articulated in. All right. Uh, it's a concentric circle of conspiracies. So you don't blame anybody when it comes to politics. Whatever you do, provided it is legitimate and legal, you cannot blame anybody. Because it is not, that's what politics is all about. Uh, if one man yeah. has smashed you, mm. if a man has smashed you, he has outsmarted you. You go back and do your homework. All right, open up. So <laughs> in synopsis, what I'm saying in synopsis, Kofi, is this. Yeah. They are wasting their time. And you will not go. And let me tell you the truth. This issue of 2027 that is going to solve, uh, that is a big fat lie. All right. Which you should know that his actions are gradually leading him to his political nadaya. Hmm. That is the truth about it. Interesting. Uh, uh, we'll go over to the, uh, the final one, which is on the front page of The Nation. Uh, interesting one. It just uh, it dovetails into uh, top trending, one of the top trending stories this morning uh, on the ASU strike. Obey court order, FG, or federal government, tells ASU. Um, I, I think this comes after, probably after uh, Ngige walked out of the... Uh, uh, the the negotiations in a meeting there at the House of Representatives. But this is what the paper, paper says. Uh, the federal government yesterday advised the Academic Staff Union of Universities to obey a national industrial court ruling that ordered striking lectures to return to work. Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngege, said a new directive by ASU exhorting its members to continue the strike was lawlessness. Uh, he added, quote, that the federal government strongly frowns at this. He released a statement in Abuja. It was released by his uh, uh, Deputy Director of Press and Public Relations, you know, where the minister accused Asu's leadership of misinforming and misleading its members. Um, it seems it's all confusing, uh, uh, Oponabo, with what is happening as far as the federal government's uh, its stance is concerned. Because on one side, we see the House of Reps negotiations, the minister walks out. On one side, we see the Minister of Education forming a committee, 14-man committee, to look into the recommendations of another committee led by Professor Nimi Briggs. Um, and then in all of this, while they're trying to see how to get this sorted out, the minister is issuing, is taking an answer to court. And then now, after the meeting, uh, where it worked out, issues a statement saying they should obey the court order. So is this government really, really, um, are they sincere about ending this strike, in your opinion? You see, uh, what the government is employing is the, what I refer to as the Fabian policy. You know, you know what the Fabian policy is. I mean, you just keep doing things to tire out the opposition. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. First yeah. and foremost, first and foremost, there cannot be a crueler tyranny than that perpetrated under the shield of the law. You breach the agreements with the ASU. ASU is saying, no, you must honor our group. It's an agreement signed by Mr. President. We reviewed agreement. You must honor. Rather than honor, you run to court. Praying the court to compel ASU to go back to work. In other words, to hell with the agreement we have. I will bring my accusers to bear. You must work willy-nilly. I will not reach that agreement. ASU will be the greatest fool to go back to work. Content? Okay. 
Let them go. Let them go and arrest them. I think this one says, go and arrest. That will be a prescription for that. A prescription for that. All right. <laughs> All right, but I will, we have we have to leave it at that. Uh, uh, what, what's the term you used again to describe what the federal government is doing? Fabian police. All right. All right. Employing the Fabian police. All right. It's talking about. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Open up on Kutara. Thank you so much. It's uh, been a very interesting session with you, and we look forward to having you again with us next week. Thank you. All right. Enjoy your Thank holidays. You. Thank you. And that's yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. That's the size of our package for of the press. Uh, we'll take a break now to just give you a bit of a taste of what happened today in history. When we return, our first major conversation. Please stay with us.